Self-pity is like an unattractive jacket. It simply must never be worn. And that is the thought for today. Welcome to 7 Good Minutes. I'm Clyde Lee Dennis. Thanks for joining me for what I believe will be seven of the most enriching minutes of your day. In today's audio, our friend Isaiah Hankel reminds us that self-pity is the enemy and gives us some useful tips on how to get rid of it. Enjoy. Quit feeling sorry for yourself. Self-pity is a very common response to stressful events. Something bad happens, you feel helpless, and you feel sorry for yourself. That's how things play out way too often. The problem is is that throwing a pity party does nothing to improve the stressful event you're facing. Now, a long time ago, I used to deliver ATMs way back in college. Uh, These were the kind of machines that you put your bank card into and get money out of. Uh, And these ATMs were extremely heavy. And I remember on one job that we had to deliver 14 ATMs all around the state of Delaware in two days. Uh, But on our very first delivery, we dropped one of these machines on its side. And an ATM, it's impossible to get back up once you drop it. Uh, We were able to do it, so we did the impossible, but it took hours uh, to get it upright. Uh, So we wasted a lot of time. Then things got worse. The lift gate on our delivery truck broke. And that was the final straw. Uh, We gave up and and just sat there feeling sorry for ourselves. Um, we, f- we knew that if we didn't get a- every ATM delivered uh, by the end of the next day, we wouldn't get paid. And there was no way now that we could deliver 13 ATMs in one day. No way. Then, early the next morning, the phone rang about 5 a.m., and it was the mechanic on the other end of the line, and he told us that the lift gate was fixed. Um, so we got back in the truck, we started delivering ATMs, and along the way, uh, the person I was working with, we got, we got into a big fight. We both got str- frustrated, started getting angry, got really mad at each other. And to our surprise, though, our anger fueled us. And we actually were able to deliver all of the ATMs with two hours to spare. Now, feeling sorry for yourself is completely useless. Self-pity promotes inaction. And it acts as a kind of gateway to learned helplessness and depression. Studies show that people who frequently indulge in self-pity see themselves as controlled by both chance and by other people, other people who are more powerful than them. That's how they see it. Now, with respect to anger expression, self-pity is primarily related to anger in. Okay, So people who feel sorry for themselves internalize their anger instead of expressing it. This is a bad thing. They ruminate or obsess over what went wrong and why it's not fair instead of taking action to make things better. Now, while these you know, pitiful thoughts might feel comforting at the time, they actually lead to bigger problems. The key is, is avoiding this kind of useless behavior. And the only way to avoid it is to build up your defenses against it, against feeling sorry for yourself. Now, the first thing you need to do is to stop apologizing for yourself. Okay, so everyone in life wants you to apologize for everything. That's just how it is. We're taught from a very young age that saying I'm sorry is the right thing to do. It's the adult thing to do. But this isn't always true. Always apologizing for yourself makes you mentally weak. Apologizing is a kind of breeding ground for self-pity. So when you constantly apologize, you communicate to both yourself and the outside world that you're always wrong. And this acts to lower your self-esteem and it damages your integrity overall. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that you should never apologize. If you did something legitimately wrong or failed to deliver, Own up to it, learn from it, and move on. But if you're apologizing for your beliefs, your desires, your goals, your past, or who you are at your core, stop it. Second, the second thing you need to do is to get comfortable with anger. This will help you stop feeling sorry for yourself. Too many people cry about anger being a damaging emotion. It's poison. It'll ruin your health. This is what they say, but it's complete nonsense. Anger is only damaging to you when you don't express it. It's only damaging when you don't know how to manage it and how to channel it productively. Now, self-pity, on the other hand, really is poison. Self-pity is poison, not anger. 
Other studies show that anger both encourages people to believe they can control their future and then motivates them to take risks. In other words, anger primes you to action, and this is a good thing. So when it comes, between, when it comes down to either feeling self-pity or anger, choose anger and then channel it productively. The third thing you need to do to stop feeling sorry for yourself is start saying no more often. People who always say yes, they're pushovers. And these people also rarely have solid goals of their own. Think about it. If you're always agreeing to help other people push their agendas forward, it means you have no time to push your own agenda forward. And maybe this is okay with you or for some people. Maybe you don't have any agenda of your own that you want to push forward. But that's a problem. And this is what a lot of people are like. They don't have any solid goals of their own, so they hide behind caring about other people more than themselves. In reality, these people don't really care about others more than you or I. They just don't have their own personal goals. Now, successful people, they say no. This is because saying no eliminates stress and makes you more dependable. Saying no also makes you more productive and creative. So start saying no. Start saying no to other people's agendas and start saying yes to your own agenda. Start saying no to feeling sorry for yourself and start saying yes to taking action and externalizing your anger. Do this and you will live a more confident and focused life. That does it for today's episode of 7 Good Minutes. Please take a moment to rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts. If you have questions, you can ask those by going to 7goodminutes.com slash askclyde or get me on Twitter at Clyde Lee Dennis. Until next time, let's be civil to one another out there. Thanks for listening.